welcome to some new space. Welcome to Art and Coffee Gallery. Uh, we are today uh, very excited to invite uh, Angie, uh, Angela, Betty Angel, uh, whoever uh, you want to uh, call her. Uh, uh, she's here. She's amazing artist. She created uh, these uh, wonderful two uh, D uh, vector landscapes that uh, brought us into different worlds. And we will be talking about uh, her uh, story, uh, about uh, the art, and about her artistic process. And uh, yeah, uh, also if you have uh, some questions, uh, you are welcome uh, to ask them. If you are on Twitch, you can uh, put them into the comments. If you are here in the gallery during the exhibition, you can put them into the text chat on uh, left bottom side or at the end. Uh, if you have some questions that you want to uh, ask, you can you can do it uh, at the end. And if you are watching on YouTube and have some question, you can use uh, the comments. So uh, we can accommodate everyone. So perfect. Thank you for joining. And let's get started. So for uh, Angie, for where are you coming from? Um, I'm actually from uh, Belgium. I studied graphic design there and lived most of my life there. And um, a couple of uh, years ago, um, I decided to move uh, to the Netherlands, where I'm still currently living. Oh, nice. Uh, and can you uh, tell us your uh, your story as an artist? Uh, are, were you always uh, the artist, as uh, some people uh, just start uh, when they are able to uh, draw their first uh, uh, picture as a kid? Or um, did you have a um, little bit more difficult journey? Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a complex one. Um, I've always had affinities with art. I've known from a very early age I've wanted to do something that had to do with art. Um, yeah, basically I was barely two years old. My parents had bought a new sofa and I was like, you know, telling my mom, oh, it's so beautiful, you know? And next thing you know, I was using a felt pen and drawing all over them. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's... Yeah, it's, it's been a very, very long story with me and art. I, I think I was doodling as far as I can remember. I mean, I've always had a pen in my hand. And um, yeah, back at my grandparents and everything, you know, they'd always have like lots of uh, paper so I could draw and create things. And uh, yeah, I guess that kind of... Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm kind of trying to figure out how to move here, but I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, here. Um, yeah, yeah so I, fantastic. I've always been drawing like for a very, very long time. And um, yeah, it was so much of a passion, you know, I drew through all my kid life, through all my teenage years. And yeah, I think when I felt it was time to orient myself to make a choice of uh, something I would like to do for a living, it, it felt natural. You know, I also did some orientation tests, of course. But becoming a graphic designer truly felt like the next best thing because, you know, it, it checked so many boxes about, yeah, creating and being creative overall. Um, so I studied graphic design uh, in Liège, in, in Belgium. Um, though the thing is, it's not because you study design that you're actually going to end up as a designer. So. In my case, the, the breakthrough kind of happened uh, much later, you know. For a long time, I've done jobs, you know, just to pay the bills and because it was very hard to to have my breakthrough, to, to, to be able to live from what I loved the most. So little by little, you know, I made changes to my life and I started besides my full-time job to do some graphic design. And um, I think my real breakthrough really came uh, with uh, the, the lockdown last year. Um, I was uh, staying homesick, you know, because, um, yeah, I got a really, really bad flu when the lockdown started. And so, yeah, I had to keep myself busy to avoid going crazy. And uh, since I already had such an affinity with vector art, I, I really started drawing like mad. But when I say like mad, it's like night and day, literally, you know. I'd start on some doodles in the evening around eight o'clock, you know, and I'd go to bed around four or five a.m. I'd get up the next day around, you know, eight, nine a.m. And then I'd start drawing again and, you know, taking breaks only to, to eat, go do my groceries and, and things like that. So ever since that moment, I've really, really been grinding like crazy. And 
yeah, I guess little by little, you know, things came together. And yeah, I think it was around November when I first heard about NFTs. Um, I was on Twitter. I was starting to get very active on there and slowly building an audience. And uh, some of my followers were like, yeah, your work is really awesome. You know, if you minted that as an NFT, I would buy that. So I was like, what's an NFT, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, little by little, these people really took my hand, you know, and um, introduced me to the wonderful world of the blockchain and yeah, educated me on that. And um, yeah, my life had gone through uh, quite some terrible ups and downs in the last year. And yeah, I didn't have the proper stable environment for a while, you know, to, to really get serious about it. And uh, around the February, it was, I actually applied to Super Rare because everybody was like, yeah, you need to go there, you know. And uh, I actually, yeah, took a gamble for it, you know. I applied and uh, end of February, I was minting my very first piece on there. And I think it's kind of fair to say the rest is history. <laughs> Oh, that's a cool story. Uh, and uh, when you were sailing, everyone, uh, you were part of uh, some community, maybe some Discord or uh, uh, how did you how yeah. did you learn about it? Uh, sorry, I didn't quite get your question. Yeah, sorry. Uh, you were mentioning that uh, uh, for the super rare, that uh, like everyone mm -hmm. was saying that uh, you should be there. Uh, so I'm just curious who the everyone was, or if you were maybe uh, part of uh, some group of artists that uh, like uh, collaborate. Actually, okay, I understand better. Thanks. Uh, no, it, it was just Twitter because uh, when I started grinding, you know, um, I I I had been becoming active on uh, Twitter not long before, and I was trying to build myself an audience as an artist, and I had a really tough time, and. <clears throat> The first community where I actually landed on Twitter was a uh, tech Twitter because as a graphic designer, you know, I also do some code, some HTML, CSS to develop websites. And I think those people were truly my first fans and they were so supportive. I mean, the, the growth with them before I really stumbled upon art Twitter was really incredible. And I'm so very thankful for all the kindness, all the love and all the support I got from these people. I mean, I'm pretty certain I wouldn't be there if it weren't for, for these guys. And um, yeah, it's, you know, it's like, you know, a friend of a friend introduces you to a friend of a friend, that kind of thing. And, and this is how, yeah, a small community started to gather around me. And somehow one day, some of these people, you know, who were in NFTs were the friends of the friends and they were the ones who were like, hey, you should do this, you know? So, and, and Discord came much later, actually. <laughs> yeah well if, uh, it's, it's like for for different people it's usually different uh, story how they get there but yeah. uh, it's um, it's actually a very similar uh, sort of journey in general uh, just just meeting a lot of uh, very supportive people uh, excited about uh, this sort of revolution and giving them uh, this additional confidence and uh, just the uh, sort of nourishment or I don't know how to say it uh, to explore more of uh, their passion uh, in doing art and uh, actually if, uh, succeeding uh, sometimes uh, sometimes not uh, in selling the art but in uh, just uh, pursuing their dreams I would say it like that uh, but uh, in your case it's actually if, uh, you are actually quite successful right uh, in if, uh, getting your art uh, to the collectors uh it's i wouldn't say i'm successful I, I would say i'm starting to 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 get there you know i've been lucky so far to sell a few pieces um but yeah as you know it, it's kind of ups and downs you know in the market it's not because you've sold so many pieces that you're selling all the time necessarily however you know i still keep busy with graphic design because it's still one of my first loves and i, I draw and i do all sort of things as an artist and when I'm not working on graphic design or NFTs, you know, I'm working on collaborations. I've just been pulled onto a wonderful project that I really hope to be able to tell everybody about real soon. But we're really in the early stages right now, so I can't say too much. But yeah, basically, I'm always working, sometimes night and day still. 
Yeah, well, for, for, from what I hear from you, uh, you are really a hard worker. And mm-hmm. uh, if you set your uh, goal or eyes to something, you just uh, uh, give it all the time that you have, which is amazing. Yeah. I love it. Uh, well, if there is something that uh, that you can say about the project or if, uh, maybe if, uh, even like give it uh, some promo or something like that, or if uh, you, you're looking uh, for someone to collaborate on that as well, well feel free to use the platform and uh, tell us tell something about it. Or if it's just too early, uh, yeah, we can we can talk later about it up to uh, completely up to you. Well, all I can say for now is that some pretty big uh, people of the NFT space uh, are going to be part of this project. And uh, I don't have the, uh, I'm not going to say it's something that's going to be big, but I, I think it has the potential of being something really, really cool. So, uh, and as an artist, you know, what you see also, uh, it's going to be collectibles. And what you see is a lot of collectibles are male oriented, you know, when you check the apes, et cetera, or even the punks. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you have lots of uh, male figures in there and you don't have that many female characters. So I'm also trying to to push so that, you know, we can really have some uh, cool female stuff that's also part of this project. It's it's really the, the, the very beginning, you know, I'm still working on the prototype. So it's super exciting to just watch everything come to life. Oh, amazing. Amazing. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> this actually if, uh, give me if uh, yeah, I can use it uh, as my plug here, <laughs> sort of, uh, because uh, I started doing uh, collectibles based on the artists that uh, uh, had their exhibition uh, in uh, this gallery or another mm-hmm. one for that I have. And actually the first one is Naila, which is a uh, female of, uh, young artist. And the second one is uh, Laura here with us uh, under the uh, nickname Shoot This Moment. So, for, yeah, for, <laughs> also for female artists. So, for, yeah, we are getting Hi, some Laura. some female collectibles. <laughs> <Yoo-hoo>. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really cool because uh, what I've seen a lot, you know, uh, is a lot of people saying that this was a very male dominated space. And to some extent, I believe it's true. You do have a, f- a couple of female artists that are, you know, making it, etc. But it's still very male dominant. Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping w- we can change this trend because you have so many beautiful, wonderful female artists, you know, who are so talented. And yeah, I mean, they really deserve more recognition. And wow. And if I can do something about that and also push for it myself as a female, I mean, I will definitely. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and uh, we have here uh, so some people watching on Twitch uh, joining uh, One Dark Side. One Dark Side. Yeah, One Dark Side. Uh, so loving it very much. Uh, your artwork. So if, uh, maybe you have uh, some Thank you so uh, some much. new fans here. So uh, that's amazing. Cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about your creative process? So we already know that you are spending tremendous amount of time creating uh, uh, each of these uh, wonderful. Um, uh, vector graphics and I would like to uh, maybe just stress that it's vector graphic uh, and we haven't had those yet so if, uh, let's uh, dig a little bit deeper and uh, tell us maybe if, uh, like probably everyone knows that but just just to be sure a little bit about what is it what make it uh, different than for the Sure. A regular painting or just a other sort of digital digital yeah work. of course so most of what you see basically in the metaverse is either stuff that's been drawn you know when it comes to 2d on an ipad via procreate i mean it's a very tough process a lot of work goes into that don't get me wrong but what you see also is a, a lot of rendering a lot of um 3D, that kind of stuff, or photography, or or those kind of things. So basically, vector art is a computer generated. Um, I'm a super big Adobe fan, and uh, I mostly work, or only work, rather, using uh, Adobe um, Illustrator. Um, I've actually posted a couple of videos on my YouTube channel for people who are interested in really following my creative process and how it works. But basically, vectors is like um, um, a definition that's uh, made with algorithms. Um, it kind of uh, has a difficulty to it because, of course, it's not the same as if you were doing 
2D, you know, in Photoshop where basically it's bitmap. So yeah, it's a bit different, but I've learned so much, you know, just in the last year alone. Initially, I was more focused on what is called flat design. Flat design is really when it's no gradients or things like that. But, you know, little by little, I started to make my work evolve and I wanted to also add some depth in there. And if you check my very first pieces, you can really see that evolution. And, and yeah, I think technically it's it's been like kind of always trying to go up a notch, you know, push the bar higher, see where it would take me, see how far I could go with this, see how I could make it grow. And it's been quite interesting because what you're seeing today in the gallery, those are rather new, you know, some of the styles. And in the past, I wouldn't use so many effects like halos and things like that. And yeah, now I'm totally going for it because yeah, I think the result is just stunning. You know, I'm just always pushing my limits and see how far I can go with whatever it is I do. Right, right. And uh, yeah, so far, can you tell us about uh, the inspiration? Uh, why did you choose uh, going for um, uh, the landscapes uh, like this? I, I know that they are quite popular in NFT space. So far, was it uh, because uh, because of that or for, for some other reason? I think it's more when I first started drawing my very, very first um, drawings during uh, the lockdown last year were um, animals. I created a whole series of animals uh, in vectors, you know, in a very specific style. It's, it was quite geometric. And uh, some of uh, the first uh, drawings I made beside that were landscapes. I'm somebody where, who has quite a contemplative side, you know, I like watching landscapes and I was going through such a rough patch in my own life that I think in a way my art is something that kind of helped me, you know, and, and in many, many ways saved me and helped me to, to find back my own peace of mind. Because I mean, I was in a very, very bad place. And I think that that, that peace I was able to find by, um, yeah, really looking into myself and asking, you know, what brings me peace when I look at, at a picture, you know, or some art. And I think it's where the affinity with landscapes really comes from, because it, it can be so powerful, you know, you look at it and it, it, it can really reach out to the depth of, of your soul and, and, and really who you are as a person. And I think it's something I've been wanting to share with people, you know, and I think it's why I find the landscapes so appealing and so beautiful, because, you know, when you look at a picture, you know, or photography, it's been a hobby at some point in my life. Um, what I found is, um, yeah, uh, it's not that I don't want people in my art or things like that, but I want something that's beyond, you know, the, the, the frontiers of gender, race or whatever, you know, I mean, we're all human beings. And I think landscapes in a way have the power to do that. You, you reach to something deeper because you're representing nature, you're representing the universe, the world around you. And I think it can have an incredible power. And I think it's, yeah, really what I'm trying to do, you know? Oh, it's great. It's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm always wondering why uh, some things are like some types of art are more um, popular in the NFT space. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, what, what you just said is, is actually like, like might be like quite deep, uh, deep truth behind that. It is not just mm -hmm. uh, that it's like pretty, but uh, that it's something uh, that help us to get through like these dark times uh, with the, uh, the COVID epidemics and yes. uh, all the dangerous uh, things going on in the world, uh, ecology and all of these things. And uh, this sort of uh, also for uh, gender inequality and uh, for, like uh, everything, everything that's going on right now uh, that, uh, yeah, sort of uh, looking at these landscapes uh, makes it really sort of neutral and positive and optimistic and also for these uh, like it almost like a portal <clears throat> especially for the one 
that's behind us and on the right hand side uh, mm-hmm. with this moon uh, gate over there actually if, uh, like uh, I really love the moon gates the concept in the Chinese architecture uh, I want you. to get one my, uh, myself uh, in the garden uh, sometime I, I really love it and it, it looks amazing in the gallery especially if Thank uh, you so much. we imagine that uh, we are in sort of a different dimension and these portals into uh, another world yeah we'll make it like uh, really cool uh, love it love it how it looks uh, in the gallery okay uh amazing maybe if uh, regarding the uh, this uh, vector graphic uh could you well if, if someone uh, right now is watching and it's like this is absolutely incredible uh, i've uh, never did it i always used uh these, these other tools for create maybe mm-hmm. made uh, just just different sort of art uh, i uh, really loved uh, this one and i would like to try it because like it's sort of perfect no matter how you scale it <laughs> yeah that, that's what i love about vectors actually it's kind of sizeless you know it can be really really tiny or it can be huge yeah yeah so of course like here those are like jpegs and there is some uh, some scaling uh done to be able to render it even on mobile phones maybe some of you are uh, watching on mobile but uh, like technically it could be used uh, as a floor to this whole gallery or ceiling uh, or, or whatever or for just uh, something on a huge uh, uh, skyscraper and it would look uh, still amazing so for yeah there are definitely for big appeals to this sort of art so tell us uh, where where people should start if they are interested in something like that Strangely enough, you're going to probably laugh, but I always start with pen and paper. (laughs) Yeah, I I still have lots of little notebooks. I really like the Moleskine uh, tiny notebooks because they've got dots and it really makes it easier to to, to make some research, you know, and to draw your things. And um, what I find with uh, vectors is if you really want to learn and do it properly and the good way, um, the reason I work with pen and paper and highly recommend it is um, you need to be bloody good already to create something from scratch from the top of your mind and I find that if you create yourself a kind of paper template to begin with you know to follow you're going to have a much easier time to create some beautiful curves you know and to get your art where you want it otherwise you can spend a lot of time you know just trying to draw something and make it look okay so yeah and yeah i've been doing it for a while as well you know i've graduated from uh, my design school in um, 2001 so that was like yeah already a while ago you know yeah it's a lot of experience i I started sorry in 2001 i graduated in 2004 so i've been drawing with vectors for quite a while and practice, I think, is the only thing that makes you perfect. I, it's really a lot of hard work. Though the really cool thing is that uh, many programs in the meanwhile also have evolved in a beautiful way. So that right now, you know, in the past, you really needed to know how Bezier curves worked to, to get something proper, you know, and a lot of training, you know, training, training, training to, to really get them perfect. But these days, it, it has evolved so much that um, you can just use techniques, for instance, in Adobe Illustrator. There's one that's called corners. And corners are actually much handier these days to draw beautiful curves than if you actually use Bezier curves. So there's one of the tutorials I made on YouTube that covers that, if anybody is interested to know. It's possibly way less complex than everybody imagines. So I really invite you if you want to learn to draw with that to go have a look and it's probably going to change your view of how you do things with adobe illustrator i mean i only draw like that now i used to be a basic curve expert and now i've totally changed my my way of working around because of that because yeah it makes it so much nicer so much more precise you know and i'm all about precision to the nearest pixel you know (laughs) <laughs> yeah you can see it on the leaves of the uh in those paintings and oh, those uh, so many little edges over there perfection <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, and yeah. Uh, one dark side, uh, love your advice, I'm saying there's nothing wrong with pen and paper. Yeah, absolutely not. Uh, there are actually some very nice uh, uh, like working, uh, work in progress uh, uh, compared to the, the final piece on your profile. So people uh, uh, can check it out. Uh, you, uh, the name is in the name of the stream. And uh, yeah, for those of you uh, that are here in the gallery, I just like stay here. But uh, I will put uh, all the links into the description of the video. So if, uh, you can then uh, later uh, check out uh, of everything, all these uh, these details and the tutorials. And I love that you actually are giving back to the community and creating some content and uh, how to uh, tutorials for other people to be able to uh, start working at the, uh, on the same thing. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. It's very time consuming. I haven't done a few for quite a while right now. Because you're usually looking, you know, at creating a script, then recording your screen, editing everything, doing the voiceover, putting it all together. But um, I really would like when I get more time to to get back to that, because I many people have actually reached out and told me that, you know, they really appreciated all the information given in the tutorials. And I wish, you know, there were more ways in which I could help other people and give back to the community, because this has just been such an amazing journey so far and honestly it's been life changing for me i mean it oh that's an amazing story uh so maybe if uh, this would be best time to actually start talking about uh, your particle artworks uh, so you can uh, tell us about them how you created them uh, what's the idea uh, for each of them and what are maybe some uh, particle uh, uh, just what to notice maybe if uh, if there is something uh, special that or some special message in there that you want to share sure sure um yeah like i was saying a little before i've been through a very rough patch you know in the last year i was in a relationship with uh, somebody it lasted for a couple of years however um that person was somewhat abusive not physically but more morally you know and um it took a while for, for me to, to kind of break away, you know, from the vicious circle of being in um, that relationship. I really suffered a lot from it. And my art, when I really started drawing during the lockdown, you know, brought me so much happiness and made me feel so much better about myself, you know. And when my partner, because uh, it took me a while before I broke up from that person, when he saw, you know, people were starting to get interested in what I did, you know, he really started putting me down and telling me what I did was rubbish, basically telling me my doodles would never pay my rent, you know, I heard everything, but in such a nasty way, that person really tried to break my spirit. And um, oh, in a way... Sorry to hear that, that's terrible. Yeah, but in a way, you know, I've learned. And what I want to say is that pushed me even further to reach within myself, you know, to, to try. Oh, uh, we, we lost you. Uh, guys, can you uh, confirm that uh, my audio is okay? Yeah. Okay, so maybe it's me. Oh, I'll just refresh it. Sorry guys, in the uh, most important time, just sort of crashed. So sorry about that. Here, reload and get right back to it. The problem with the frontier technology: sometimes something breaks, but going to be fine. Almost there. Almost there. Login and all right. It's, you know, when you look at the colors and everything else, it's really all about looking inside yourself. You know, it's something that tries to appeal in some kind of way to deep within yourself. You know, to to that inner peace we all have, to 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 all that goodness. You know, and all the positive things we have inside of us. And most of those pieces are really about finding that inner strength that all of us have. And I think it's really an invitation to introspection and to connect to that deeper part of ourselves. I don't know if that makes sense. 
Oh, uh, absolutely does. Uh, I'm sorry, I disconnected for a second because uh, I lost audio. It happened to me the same oh, thing. Can that you happened. still hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now uh, perfectly. Oh, maybe not. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I can hear you perfectly. I can hear you perfectly. Uh, I disconnected for oh. a second. <laughs> uh, so for people that are watching uh, on Twitch or later on YouTube, uh, you missed the important part there. But you get the, uh, the start and the end. And uh, there's a moral to that as well. Uh, so <laughs> if you want to have a perfect um, experience, uh, it's best to come here into the gallery uh, and live session. You will get everything and you will not miss, uh, miss a second. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what, what you said, or at least what I get, the, the start and the end, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's just an amazing inspirational story. And I just uh, love how so many artists actually have these and uh, so many artists uh, just like joined, like maybe did some sort of art or design or, or something, but uh, no, uh, when they come to the NFT space and see uh, the, the feedback and uh, the possibilities of the space are just going much farther and the experiment uh, create, uh, to create um, the wonderful art, like for example, like you are creating or uh, uh, different sort of arts and they are bringing these stories. And yeah, I, I really appreciate that uh, like you come here and I know that it's difficult to, to share a story like that, but uh, I think it can help a lot of people that are maybe in maybe in similar situation or like, just indifferent, but it can give them strength that um, they're just uh, like, if you do what you love, then just, uh, just the journey uh, can give you strength to uh, move on uh, and uh, yeah, just just it's sort of reward uh, in itself or at least uh, it's, it's how I see it <laughs> I don't know if it makes any sense <laughs> oh, oh yes it does and honestly it might have been tough you know at first to really talk about it but the healing process I believe on my side is almost complete it's still a healing but more as a person you know because I've been working so hard on myself but yeah I think you know we shouldn't shame ourselves you know in sharing such stories because like you say if it can be an inspiration and if it can help other people then i really wish with all my heart you know people can get something from this i'll just wait for this to go by <laughs> sorry no worries. yeah <laughs> my window is open and you can hear everything outside um yeah if that can bring strength to people, then, you know, it's a way already for me to, to give back to other people. And all I can say is never let anybody talk you down. You know, if you have a dream, if there's something you love more than anything in the world, don't let anybody stop you. And even if they'll laugh at you, because that happened to me, you know, just keep going, you know, don't pay attention to them. And if you know you have that strength, just go and do it seriously. Amazing, amazing message. Amazing message. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so uh, I think we. Uh, uh, I missed part, uh, but uh, st still, I think we. Uh, you haven't uh, talked about the particular artworks, right? So maybe we could start with the uh, Moon Gate, or uh, I know it's probably not called Moon Gate. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot the name. <laughs> but we can start with that, and you can tell us uh, tell us about it. What we are uh, watching. Uh, which one do you call the moon gate actually? Let me have a look around. Yeah, so it's on your right hand side. Oh, yes, that beautiful one, yes. Yeah, yes. It's, I think it's it's called moon gate, uh, like this sort of uh, semicircle shape. The garden, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I've had the chance to uh, live in a foreign country when I was much younger. I've actually... Um, lived um, in Australia and I've had the chance to be exposed to other cultures in such a different way, you know, than here being in Europe and leading my European life. And uh, back in Australia, instead of, you know, learning um, French or German or whatever at school, you know, a lot of people over there learn Japanese. And um, I think Japanese is a very, very cool language, you know, you start learning the kanas and so the writing system and, and yeah, slowly you also get acquainted with things that um, have to do with uh, Japanese culture. And um, what I really like about Japanese culture is the Zen side of things. 
Um, mm -hmm. the, the Zen spirit is really something that goes uh, into the essence of, of something. And it's, it's pure, you know, there's kind of this purity research. I, I don't mean pure as in, you know, something bad, but more like it's the simplicity, you know, it's sometimes the power you find in the small things. Uh, for instance, I find the Japanese gardens, you know, so relaxing. They're so beautiful. quite in depth and um it's just the experience you know you get when, when you're in such a place and there's something so powerful about it you know it it really relaxes you it makes you feel so incredible so at peace you know with yourself and with everything around you and i think that's really what i tried to create uh, in that piece you know this this beautiful feeling of yeah, being in balance, being in a place where you have beauty all around you that inspires you. It's not necessarily complex things, you know, it's not Versailles. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it just reaches out to the depth of your soul. And I don't know, it, it really strongly connects with me in, in that regard. Yeah, if, uh, with, mood, uh, with me too, uh, if, uh, if we are talking about uh, the Japanese and, and Chinese culture and uh, this sort of thing, uh, like the Zen on the side of, uh, of Jap uh, Japanese, then for some parts of the Taoist culture on the side of, of the Chinese, uh, they are sort of uh, simple, uh, dif different takes on the same essence, yes. I think. They are, yeah, in a way. Uh, yeah, so far uh, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, we have here DJ uh, V minus uh, commenting uh, very positively. She's super interesting. Uh, love her art. It's amazing. So far uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of people interested in what you are doing. So thank you. Thank you DJ so much. V minus. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate all the support and all the kindness I'm receiving from people. And if you know, making my art is bringing people something then it's already giving a lot back i think yeah yeah uh absolutely like you don't need to own the art to be able to f enjoy it and get something uh, out of it no perfect perfect and uh, uh actually when you talked about the zen then uh, and uh, there's this repeating like element or uh, just idea of the peacefulness uh, that's repeating uh, throughout your work and also for your descriptions. Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, it's actually uh, maybe like a really good piece to start with. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can continue with the other ones. It's actually really nice because uh, how from um, like the little I know about um, uh, this, this Zen gardens is basically if, uh, that they usually if, like Japanese uh, guys did it. Uh, they, they have um, this like coast as usually like not many if, uh, things grow on the coast, right? <laughs> uh, like stones and sand and so on. So that's like their ideal uh, Zen place. And the Chinese, they, they have it. They are more in like it's, it's the coast is there, but uh, the most of the uh, uh, the population is in uh, the f um, just uh, not on the coast. Sorry, my English is so bad. Uh, but uh, so so it's different. And here your artworks, uh, they actually it's almost like they explore these like zen gardens, but from di for different people, different worlds, and different perspective. But it's it's the same idea. Uh, am I hitting it a little bit? Is 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 it uh, what's going on there? Yeah, the, the strange thing, you know, is um. I'm European and I've known other cultures and yeah, I think it's kind of a blend of, you know, lots of things coming together through the filter also of my personal experience. And it's very tough, I think, to recreate something that's not even of your own culture, but it's more a feeling you're trying to convey. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, I think it can be like really interesting uh, then even for the people from that culture to see how other people uh, see their culture from like outside so for because uh, then for, i think uh, uh, like if i would be or when i was describing japanese then for, yeah it's, it's like my understanding of that 
So uh, then it's, it's like a sort of a mirror, but not the exact mirror for them. So, uh, so they can maybe almost uh, learn more about me by talking about them than, uh, you know, uh, than someone else would, uh, would learn about uh, the, the Japanese culture. Well, that's probably for sure. <laughs> Yeah, makes uh, makes a lot of sense. Okay, let's move on to the next one, the one uh, behind sure. you. Uh, it's also yes. sort of a portal or doorway. Yes. Uh, I have a thing for arches. <laughs> you probably already <laughs> saw that uh, in some of my pieces because uh, arches are round, you know, and you probably also noticed that I use a lot of very round shapes, you know, and round curves in my work because it's something that's really gentle you know it's um yeah a portal i think in my work when when you look at something it's kind of like the, the zen garden the, the the black part around the art you know is more like plunging into yourself and um, it's the best way for me to describe it and you will find that black border somehow around the art on a, in a lot of my pieces. And I think the, the, that black part is really like, you know, opening a door and plunging into yourself. It's, it's actually what it's supposed to represent, that part where you look within. And that's what the portal is also supposed to be about. When you look within yourself, you know, you make the effort of going into a totally other dimension in some kind of a way. And it's also what the corridors are about, you know, um, here there's a small corridor and it's really about traveling within, you know, a and when you look at it, of course, you have a, a landscape outside, it's a desert, the desert is a sim symbol for many, many things, you know, nothing grows in the desert, it it's a very arid place, you know, it can be very, very cold at night and it can be very, very warm during the daytime. So those are quite extremes, you know, and some of us, you know, go through some extremes, you know, at times in our life. And um, when you look at the colors, the way they are blended together, you know, the night sky, there's, I love symbolism. And I think in a way you can really look in depth when you check my work, when you look at it. Yeah, don't be afraid, you know, to use your own interpretation, but I connect a lot to symbolism, you know, I'm from Belgium and symbolism is also a movement that happened in painting, you know, about um, a little less than a hundred years ago and you have René Magritte, which was a, a terrific painter, he was more in surrealism and surrealism, it's something that looks very realistic, but at the same time, everything, you know, on there has a meaning and, and it's more or less the way I try to work when I create something, you know, it, it looks realistic, but nothing is there out of the blue, you know, nothing is there for free. There's always a good reason for it. And I think here the desert, you know, can be sometimes the hardship you have in your life, you know, going through the hard phases. But you also have the night, you know, coming down. So it's kind of like an in-between between the day and night. And how to explain that? It's, yeah, sometimes, you know, it makes sense to you, but it's a lot more complex to, 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 to share the, the exact meaning, I think, with other people. But I think here what you need to really look at is um, the dove, you know, the dove that's flying away in the night sky. And... With all that hardship, you know, that landscape that's very arid, you know, the night falling and everything. I think what it represents is really the freedom of the soul, you know. What, there comes a point when you really search and you really do the work on yourself as a person where you're like a bird, you know. I was listening or reading something not that very long ago. I love tarot cards, you know, and... Um, the other day I was listening to a reading while I was doing something else, you know, and there's um, in a beautiful tarot deck, there, there's like um, a card that's symbolized by a cage that is open. The bird, you know, is inside the cage, but yet the cage is open. And I think it's, you know, life is kind of like that. A lot of the time, you know, we're prisoners of our own mind, you know, and a lot of the time, sadly, the cage is open, so it's also up to us, do we want to stay in the cage, you know? Do we want to keep ourselves prisoners? Do we want to remain prisoners of our lives? 
or do we just want to fly away? It can take a real leap of faith, but yeah, it's all within, you know, it's also finding the strength to be able to do that. Because a lot of the time it might be easy to say, yeah, it's up to us, but no, it's also finding the, 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 the way of thinking, you know, um, <clears throat> finding the strength to really be able to do that. And I think here, this kind of piece, you know, this image here, it's really what it's about in my personal interpretation, in the meaning I want to give to it. Wow, uh, amazing, amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's really personal. Yeah, well, I think uh, the, the like, good art usually is on some level. Uh, and yeah, thank you for uh, really going deep and uh, yeah, sharing uh, sharing it with us because it's just like first it's, it's not easy and second it's uh, uh, like sort of like not not convenient thing to do uh, like you created art so you can just okay this is this is the art but taking the uh, not just the work to create the art but also for make the effort to share uh, the the story behind the art and how it how is it personal not just that it is personal but how it is personal so far we can connect it uh, to your story it's um, it's something special something special and i, I absolutely love the uh, the contrast in those colors and uh, the the gradients there uh, especially when you are saying like it's a sunset and uh, maybe like something dark is going to come oh uh I see that uh, we we lost uh, her NG. I hope she's going to come back soon. Uh, but yeah, this this art is amazing. Ah, hi, hello back. Hello. <laughs> hello back. Awesome. Yeah, I think I dropped out. Yes. Yeah, that uh, happens. It's okay. <laughs> okay, now I'm trying to figure out how to look at the mic. <laughs> That's a whole other story. Yeah, just ah, yeah here. perfect you are doing awesome <laughs> so, sorry i didn't hear the, the rest of your question sorry yeah yeah it was it was more like a, a comment on the on the gradients and uh, the the contrast of the colors so it looks uh, almost like yin and yang or uh, like these two different uh, contrasts and the symbology of uh, the um, uh, like circle day and night and currently it's like the sunset sunset so mm -hmm. it's really interesting. Yeah, you'll find a lot of sunsets and moons and yeah, sunrises in my work because I think the colors are really powerful when you look at a sunset, you know, you have the color of day, you know, you have yellow, you have the color of night, you usually have black, you know, blues and uh, purples, but also at the same time you have lots of hues in between and a lot of the time, you know, you get pink in there and pink is um, usually considered a color of healing and the color of the heart. So perhaps it's also what reaches uh, deep inside people. I don't know. At least for me, I know it does. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just uh, the reason why really people love these sort of um, um, paintings. Yeah, I will ask you, sorry, I will ask you to change the mic to the other one uh, that was working better. Probably just to reset it when you joined uh, uh, again. Oh, yeah, perfect. Oh, no, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I just switched. It should yeah, be yeah. better now. Sorry. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, everyone can, can hear you uh, very clear now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, so uh, maybe let's move on to these uh, another two that we have here on our uh, left hand side. Yes. So tell us oh. about those. There are some, some more symbols over there. Uh-huh. Yeah, this one is uh, called uh, the shrine. Let me move back to the mic. <laughs> yeah, I'm still fiddling my way around uh, the metaverse. Sorry, I'm really a newbie. It's kind of the first time, you know, today that, um, like I told you earlier, that I'm actually logging on here and uh, interacting with people in the metaverse. So, yeah, sorry, I'm I'm hectic. Yeah, no worries. You are doing fantastic. Like, uh, really, uh, you were able to figure out uh, the thing with the uh, the mic, uh, the headphones, and everything. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, you are doing fantastic. 
amazing yeah for the people that were here that left they are uh, like, uh, back uh, in the stream i think <laughs> really maybe lost the audio or something so they are there so far uh, hello guys on the twitch stream and uh let's continue with this um, uh third uh yeah drawing or uh, how do you actually call them for when uh, when they are uh, 2d uh 2d vectors i call them pieces or artworks simply because yep. Yeah, it makes them more sense, I think, to me. They are drawings indeed, but uh, yeah, I see them more like pieces, doodles, or whatever you want to name <laughs> them. I think it's a personal affinity, whatever is more comfortable uh, for people. Oh, doodles, that's almost uh, blasphemy. <laughs> so that, that third piece you're uh, looking at right now is uh, called the shrine. And um, it's also something that's got um, a really deep meaning. Um, well, all, all of my work has meaning in my eyes, so yeah, Ugh, duh. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, this one, I think, is more about um, that place of inner strength, you know. Um, the meaning of this is that no matter what happens in your life, you know, you have places of cold because um, what you see around the, 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 the bubble that's in the center of the piece is supposed to be snow. I'm not sure if that comes out the way I intended, but anyway, it's still the contrast was really interesting. So I left it there. Um, mm -hmm. And what you, you can actually see is inside the bubble, you know, that the snow isn't completely everywhere. You still have this beautiful Japanese garden gravel, the, that little uh, tree there, that Joshua tree and, and uh, those um, stones, you know. And um, basically what this is representing is the strength that we all have inside of us, you know. All of us can sometimes have journeys that are filled, you know, with hardships and, and really horrible things we go through. But I think no matter how the world breaks you, because I think as human beings, nobody escapes the fact that life breaks you, you know, one way or the other. I mean, we're all damaged to a certain point, but it's also up to us. Do we want to remain damaged or do we want to heal ourselves? And what this piece is really about, you know, is... All of us, I think, inside ourselves, within our souls, we have a shrine, you know, a, a safe place. And I think this is what this piece is really representing. You know, if you look there in the center, you have what I just explained, you know, with the, the tree and uh, the, the, the stones and the gravels. But if you look close, there, there's a bubble around it. There's a halo around the bubble. And I think what that's really representing is that no matter what happens to you, there, there's this safe space nobody can get to, you know? No one can break that, it's yours, you know? You own it and it's a place of courage, you know? It's a place of strength and it's the place that will make you break free, you know, from hardships and that will bring the, life back, the light back into your life. And, I think this is really what I've been trying to create here. You know, if you look above, you have a moon with um, a star shining. It could be Venus because they usually call it the morning star. It's up to people to see whatever they want to see. And you have a sun above, you know, and it's kind of in a way we all have a universe inside of us. You know, we have so much richness, so so much inner life. And yeah when life gets hard you know we all reach within that place to find the strength you know to go on to be positive again about things and, and and to really build ourselves up again and to heal ourselves and no one can touch that really it's a sacred place and it's why also this piece is called the shrine it takes a lot you know to break that and yeah oh. it's, it's the best way i can explain it i think it's amazing. I, I I love the way how you can talk about your art and uh, tell these uh, like super inspirational stories. Uh, they can. I, so I will much. probably make uh, like short videos about each one, or uh, uh, I don't know how uh, how well I managed to to, to frame the shots uh, and so on. But I for, I for sure uh, will create some highlights for people uh, that maybe don't have time to watch the full uh, video. Uh, to at least uh, get a little bit inspiration from these these shorter ones because uh, those are uh, amazing amazing stories and uh, I I really love how you uh, you have talent not just for the art but also for the describing the art which uh, I think is quite rare so yeah awesome 
So tell us about the last one, which is uh, a little bit uh, different <laughs> because we have uh, a lot of planets over there mm -hmm. and, and the butterflies and uh, flowers. So, so tell us about that. So that one is called uh, happy, up, happy Up Here. And Happy Up Here, <laughs> yeah, it, it, can, it can be about a lot of things again. And uh, I think it's also about a, a place, you know, of being somewhere within yourself where you can find some strength, but in a different way. Um, for some reason, this one kind of reminds me of my grandma when I look at it in a way. She died um, a couple of years ago, and uh, she's somebody who really supported me throughout my life, who's always been there. And um, I know she's in a better place, you know, even though she passed away and she no longer is with me. Um, so happy up here is about, you have your mind, you know, you have your spirit, you have all these things where you can live, you know. Um, how, how to explain that better? Um, yeah, let me try to find better words. It's kind of your safe haven inside of yourself, you know, happy up here is maybe life sometimes isn't as bright or as good as you would want it to be, but you can always keep that seed of positivity somewhere inside of your mind, you know, and we're all children of the universe, or at least I'd like to believe in something much larger, even though I'm not Catholic or anything, or I'm not for religion, but I do believe there's a higher power, you know, and I think this piece somehow is also about connecting to something much higher than ourselves, you know? And I think this is what the planets are somehow representing. And I think the reason why I wanted to put the view as something that's outside planet Earth, because you actually see planet Earth, it, it's kind of, you're out of the planet Earth picture, you're looking at it, you know? And it seems like you're some mm -hmm. other place because you also have like a field, you know, with flowers in front of you. and. I think it's about contemplating also other perspectives in life, you know, it's, life can have so many facets, you know, it's, um, it's kind of like a diamond in a way, it can be in the rough, but there are many, many ways of looking at it and happy up here is also about trying to find that positivity inside of you and that good place where you can simply be happy, it's simply I think about happiness, you know, there's a beautiful sight, you, you have the sky, there's something much larger than you. And I think the field of flowers is, is really about that, you know, they're white. You have this really strong contrast with the rest of the picture. The further you go away, you know, into space, the darker it gets. It's not necessarily something negative or whatever, it, it's more the fact that you can still create light no matter what happens in your life and keep positive things. And in a way, the, the, the flowers are white, so it can represent some kind of a purity. And the butterflies are something quite symbolic if you actually look at the meaning of them, because, you know, they go through phases in their life. They start as a caterpillar, you know, and then they become a chrysalis. And when that happens, you know, you can be in this place of stagnation where nothing really happens in your life, you know. You can get there for a very, very long time. But when the transformation is over, you know, you come out as this amazing creature. And you, what do, do you know? You know, you start as a butterf as um, sorry, a caterpillar, and then when you become the butterfly, you've transformed. You know, you've grown wings. You, you've outgrown yourself. You, you've gone to places in a way. You know, and, and I think it's really about that. And again, like I said, I, I like symbolism, but the, it's you also have three butterflies. Um, and three is a number that's also often by people linked to the divine or to trinity or to whatever you know throughout religions i'm not again for any particular religion or anything but what you tend to see is in many cultures many numbers sometimes have similar meanings and yeah it's about having that special spark you know in, in all of us and being able to transform outgrow ourselves and, and still keep you know in a beautiful positive space yeah amazing amazing <laughs> thank you so really all for sort of message of uh, positivity, hope, strength. Uh, so for when you start creating a new uh, piece, new artwork, mm -hmm. uh, how do you start? 
is it the idea or uh, is like do you start with uh, the story that uh, you are telling us now or, the, or, uh, or from the, the actual artwork and the story comes later it kind of depends i mean i have different processes you know i think as an artist we all have the that kind of moment sometimes where we're in front of the blank canvas and we're looking for inspiration for, for my part it, it's I have different ways and either sometimes, you know, I have something that really comes as a vision in my mind, as a flash, you know, and I'm like, oh, I really want to create that. And usually what I do is I'll go straight away on a doodle, you know, and I'll just get something really, really rough going or sometimes a little more detailed. So that's one of the processes, just having a vision, you know, and make it come to life. At other times, you know, um, I love places like Pinterest and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, sometimes it, you just create for the sake of creating because it makes you feel good. You know, it brings you um, in a safe place inside yourself, like I was saying before. And creating connects me to a lot more in my life. It's something that brings me a lot of joy. So even when I'm in front of a blank canvas, I can sometimes spend hours just looking at pictures on Pinterest because it's not about copying or anything. It's sometimes just about the vibe, you know, you, you're looking, I think, when you want to create sometimes for a very specific vibe. And I can browse for hours just looking at pictures. And, and sometimes I stop in front of a, a picture and I'm like, okay, you know, where is this vibe coming from? What brings that vibe into the picture? And I think it's part of the process. How can I recreate that, you know, from my own point of view, from my own personal experience, from what I have within? And sometimes it's like, okay, um, I also try to, to keep uh, to a certain way of uh, doing my work. For instance, you will often find very, very strong contrasts. Um, if you look at the artwork around you, a lot of them are colored with a single gradient. So uh, the gradients usually, I have a couple of them. Um, some of them uh, have uh, blue tints in them. Some of them have uh, purple blackish tints. Um, you usually have some yellow, you have some pink, you have some purple or some blue. And the last color of the gradient will often be black. And sometimes there's also some white in that gradient. And um, that one single gradient will be used throughout that very same piece to color every single uh, part of uh, the piece itself. And um, it's also about being able to bring that process together, you know, with the ideas, with the feel I have come upon when I look at some art. It's like, okay, now how can I make this my own? And it can just take hours. Uh, for, for instance, that um, Zen Garden uh, image we were looking at before, it's uh, one of those pieces where I was just browsing through things, you know, and it kind of came slowly together. That picture took me, I think, four days to create. And that one, it was due to uh, the incredible amount of details. As you were saying, you know, if you look at uh, the branches, you can see every single individual leaf on there. And uh, I think that's what took me the longest. Uh, initially, I had a particular vision, you know, and I started creating uh, according to that vision. And um, at some point I was like, okay, I'm totally mad, you know, I've been doing these branches for three days now and I'm still totally nowhere. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so along the way, you know, my vision kind of changed and I was like, okay, you know, how can I still bring about this beautiful feeling I'm trying to create, make it my own, you know, with my contrasts, my gradients and, and everything else. And I've been wanting for a long, long time to, to use a, a, a Japanese round window. And I was like, why do I not do that? You know, because it's a Japanese maple. I'm actually drawing. And that's kind of how it came together, you know, browsing through pictures, seeing things. And, you know, that created some feels I was really trying to connect to and connect other people with. And I was like, OK, let's make this come together. And, and, and quite naturally, you know, one element led to the other. And yeah. Oh, four days. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Crazy, well, spe- right? Especially, especially when I know for that uh, like four days uh, doesn't mean like two hours a day. It's more for like no. 16, I guess. <laughs> in your case. Uh, yeah, in average, I can spend quite a lot of time uh, on a piece. And I think that one is probably one of the craziest ones I've done so far because of uh, the incredible amount of time I've actually put into it. If you go really, really close um, to that uh, artwork, you will see that um, every leaf has been shaped, you know, uh, they're all the same leaf, uh, they're all the clone of the same leaf, but I mean, I've resized every single one of them, I've turned the leaf around, you know, to to kind of uh, make it come together as a, a bunch of leaves, you know, a branch, a tree or whatever. And um, I've actually restyled every individual leaf on there with a gradient to to make sure, you know, it would create that beautiful light effect and, uh, yeah, create that magic. It's all about the magic in the end, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> love magic and love this artwork. Uh, is this Thank available you. or is it sold already? No, it's uh, still available. Um, I just got accepted onto Maker's Place and uh, this one has been submitted onto Maker's Place. Uh, however, in uh, the um, admission process, you need to create uh, or at least uh, put on there three pieces. The thing is, they took a little while to get back to me. I was hoping to put Happy up there and uh, the Shrine also together um, with uh, that piece on Maker's Place, but they got back to me so late, you know, I was kind of like, okay, did they forget about me? So I reached out to them and in the end, you know, they were like, oh no, we're just missing some of your data. So if you you can give that to us, then, you know, we can uh, complete uh, your uh, admission and you're in. So I was like, oh, super, you know? <laughs> but um, since all the good art- artworks I had already created, you know, were already on other platforms due to the fact that I heard about I'm quite late then I was like okay you know I need to recreate things and uh, yeah so this one will be available there quite soon I just need to create two more pieces before it um, actually is and my uh, registration there is complete yeah. right so far we have many more pieces uh, to look forward to and this one is really special so far maybe if someone likes it uh, they, they might be quite glad that you will not be able to list it sooner Because I guess uh, it might go quite fast. Let's see, let's see about that. Okay. Uh, so for, yeah, this was a wonderful talk. Uh, if we have uh, anyone here that's uh, watching, or uh, uh, Laura, uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, now is your opportunity to ask uh, Angie uh, here live. So if, uh, she would answer you. It was a uh, wonderful talk to you. So many uh, like incredible, uh, inspirational stories. Yeah. Thank you so much. Laura, I uh, love your work. <laughs> cool. Uh, so if, uh, yeah, everyone is watching uh, that, uh, is, uh, that uh, likes the show, uh, likes what uh, we are doing. Uh, we have uh, uh, these uh, every week on Tuesday. Uh, at uh, exactly the same time, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so if you like it, uh, you can join us uh, either on Twitch, uh, RTFXCZ, or uh, here directly in the gallery. Uh, the parcel number is 4634. Uh, it's in Somnium space. And uh, yeah, uh, also if you can uh, give us a follow on the Twitch stream, uh, like subscribe on YouTube. And uh, uh, NG, uh, what is the best way uh, if people want to reach you? Uh, maybe see some of your art or if I want to if, uh, uh, send you a message or if, uh, just uh, talk to you maybe uh, what's the best way how to do that um i'm constantly connected to social media <laughs> <laughs> um, um i'm available on twitter where uh, my uh, handle is uh, petit angel just like uh, here there's an e with a french accent that for some reason didn't show up here uh, on my metaverse tag but uh Yeah, ah, really. normally it will. Um, you can also uh, find me on Discord, where uh, I'm hanging out most of the time when I'm at home working or online. I'm also usually quite fast to reply to people. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very connected. So yeah, feel free to reach out to me, whether it's on Twitter, on Instagram. I'm also on Dribble. 
Um, you can also find my work, though my website is not currently super up to date, but um, I will try to do that real fast. My uh, address is um, designbyng.com. Nice, thank you. I will put all those links into the description of the video. So if you are watching on YouTube, you can just go into the description, uh, scroll down, and there will be all the links uh, to uh, Angie's uh, social media, website, and uh, her collection. So you can go there, uh, check it for yourself, and maybe buy yourself uh, some wonderful piece uh, as we have here. And uh, yeah, also, uh, <laughs> thank you uh, thank you Laura this was this was a really wonderful exhibition I love it and I will probably f listen to it uh, one more time later just to uh, just to f hear those stories uh, one more time <laughs> so f <laughs> what we usually do is at the end uh, we just dance together so f <laughs> you can click the, the dance button and Yay. let's do it so uh, thank you everyone for watching and see you next time goodbye oh, please thank you so much for hosting me for taking the time to talk with me hosting this i forgot to say it at first but i really <laughs> really appreciate being here with you having shared my story i think i've never gotten that personal about my work so it's the first and it was for you so thank you so much for hosting and uh yeah for bearing with me because that was a lot of talking <laughs> it was amazing i loved it so have a nice thank you day. so much goodbye everyone on the stream and the youtube